Here on Retro Game Hall, th this is the only place on the internet where blurred is the word. Hello everyone, thank you so much for stopping by and welcome back to Retro Game Hall! I mean, God, that took the breath out of me. That was like, there was so much energy I had to put into that. I just, whew, had to restart. I mean, watch yourself. I, was, I need to be more careful. Man. You, I mean, you should. Is, fuck. I'm gonna give myself like an aneurysm or something. I mean, it, all this retro. It's too much fucking retro. <laughs> this might actually, like, dude, if you get a freaking, like, flux capacitor anywhere near this, you don't need plutonium when you got this much around. You no. can just get this crap in the vicinity of it. Boom! 1.21 gigawatts. That's Fuck. all it is. 88 miles per hour? You gotta take eight steps for the shit that's right here, right now. That's absolutely. Uh, Should we even hype it this time? I mean, we hype it every month, and people are probably getting sick and tired of that. I'm not getting sick and tired of doing it because, I mean, just looking at this stuff excites me. I mean, yeah, huh? Excites me, yeah. Aloha. You know, I mean, it's just. We've got a lot of stuff to lay on you guys here. I mean, this. I think we needed to take this a little bit more seriously. I mean, we get too excited. This stuff could catch on fire. I mean, if we take ourselves too seriously, though, we might go fucking insane from the sheer amount of shit that we have here. Like, it's good shit. It's it good shit. But the first taste is free. Mm, that's how we get you hooked. Mm -hmm. Just taste that shit. You're like, that's some good shit. And you keep coming back to buy our shit. Come on, get your shit. You eat shit. So you guys know how we fucking get down here. We're gonna start you off with the games. Are you fucking ready? You're not fucking ready. Get fucking ready! So... There's no open flames anywhere near here, are there? Mm, I don't know, maybe. Okay. We, we better secure those. As a matter of fact, you guys watching this, you better secure it on your end, too, because... You really should. I have to do, uh... That, that. Is it about that time? It's... Is it that time? We're gonna do that thing. Well, it's not that time, but we're gonna do that thing. Can I do it? Can I do it now? Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand back. Stand back. You know what time it is? It's time for rapid fire! Rapid fire! Top players tennis? His hook! Yar! Baseball stars? Gray Car Gauntlet. Willow? You are great! Okay, so I think we need to throttle back on Rapid Fire right now. I'll um, talk about a couple special games here, so Chuck, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you so much. Whew, man. That was dangerous. Yeah. So next up, we've got an unauthorized cart, Venice Beach Volleyball. And if you look at the cover of this thing, guys, is it me or does that look like an 80s porn movie? American Video Entertainment? I mean, that's that sounds like the name of a porn movie company, like VHS era porn. It really does. Like, this... 8-bit porn. 8-bit porn. So next up, we have another bootleg cart that, as you'll notice, is upside down. Look at this I mean, dumbass like shit. <laughs> I think that really says it all. <laughs> this is pretty dumb. So yeah, it's nice and shiny and polished and everything, but that's just to reel you in. It's just a polished turd. That's all it is. But there's a little extra something. Like, I mean, extra, like, vestigial tail kind of extra. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like something is missing off the back of this. I know it's not. But, because a lot of these games are designed this way. Okay, so it says position B. Only use this position if the game does not work in position A, and it's got a little switch right up here. Sorry, if I can get that in frame, where it just slides back and forth. Why do you even need to do that? Like, are NES games not, like, fickle enough where you gotta, like, blow on them and do a fucking spirit dance or something to get them to work sometimes? Like, now you have to have different positions? What the hell? What is this, like... NES sexy? Like Nex or something? Ness X? I don't know. You're not bringing Nexy back. So next up we have a pair of Sega CD games. So first up we've got Jurassic Park, uh, not to be confused uh, with the one previously seen on Retro Game Hall, which was the more action-y kind of platformy one. Uh, this one's more like a point and click uh, where you're sent to the island actually after the events of Jurassic Park uh, to, re to recover some dinosaur eggs. So, I don't know. I've never played it, but we'll see. Next up, we got Rise of the Dragon. Um, never played this one before. It's an MA17 game, so that's basically before the mature rating, but it looks like an old-school PC kind of point-and-click type of thing. Um, this might even be a PC port for all I know, but I don't know, man. There's all these really weird and obscure games on the Sega CD. It's yeah. just so much strange crap that just never showed up anywhere else, but it's that's almost what makes it interesting, in my opinion. 
is that there are all, all these like kind of misfits in the video game world that you can only get on that one platform. Right. So, um, you know, they still haven't uh, gotten to the point of being unaffordable uh, for the most part. So, hmm. you know, I love long boxes. You know, when especially when it comes to PlayStation, there's just size matters when it comes to boxes. It does, and there's just something kind of cool about having, you know, like bigger artwork and everything. It's kind of like having vinyl versus a CD. Yes. You know, like it's more artsy fartsy, you know, for the collectors out there. So uh, today we got a trio of PlayStation One long box games. So first up, we've got Cyber Speed. I think we mentioned last time that almost everything when PlayStation came out was either like some kind of shooter or a racing game. I mean, that just seems the way it started out. Like, that's how they got their druthers. I guess because those two are, like, those are proven genres that anyone can play. You know, they didn't want to go too much into the adventure or the RPG thing because that was kind of a niche back then. Uh, but, yeah, this is just, you know, miscellaneous, kind of forgettable title. But, yeah, who knows? It could be cool. Next up, we have Gunship. AH-64 Attack Helicopter Simulator. It's fucking awesome. I can't really vouch for this version, as I've not played this. This came out in 96. The original version was on PC in 1986. What kind of PC did you play it on? Tandy 1000 RGB. Whoa. Yeah. Wasn't Tandy the Radio Shack brand? Yes. Is that what it was? Okay. Yes. It, that was like high-tech shit before Amiga and all that. But like the Tandy, oh yeah, I was, I was rocking. But this was absolutely one of my favorite games. So I'm very curious to see how this one holds up 10 years later. So I will be playing this and I will let you guys know. But Microprose, if you ever see that company, awesome flight simulators. Check them out. Got two PS2 games this month. So first up, we've got Gradius 3 and 4. Um, man, dude, I absolutely love this series, man. I mean, the, the side-scrolling slash top-down, like a little bit of both, Konami shooter. You know, just kind of updated for the PlayStation 2 platform. You guys know we love it. We played Life Force on Retro Game Lounge. It's just Konami doing one of the things that Konami does best. The soundtracks are always awesome. The action is always intense. The power-ups are ridiculous. And more importantly, guys, Couch Co-op. I mean, this is what retro gaming is all about. It's almost like a lost art um, in the age of Xbox Live and PlayStation Online and everything like that. So this one you'll probably be seeing on Retro Game Lounge sometimes, so by all means, stay tuned. So we've said this a hundred times on this show, man. Compilation discs are where it's at. I mean, this all the platforms these days, Xbox, even Xbox 360, PlayStation 2, Wii, these things are like a dime a dozen these days, not in price, but I'm just saying there's like a ton of them out there where you can get Bang for your buck. 20 games like on one disc, and sometimes 20 really good games. So in this particular case, uh, we've got Tato Legends. Man, I absolutely love Tato. I mean, Tiger Heli, for example, oh, yeah. Tato game. They've got so many great and awesome games. Renegade. I mean, you just you go on the list of the classics. Um, this one actually updates them a little bit, and they they throw in a few of their arcade games. You know, Puzzle Bobble, for example. If you love Bubble Bobble, I know I do. I mean, it's just I love absolutely love games like that. But I will love with you guys. The main reason that I bought this title is because it has one title that you cannot get anywhere else, and I've always wanted to play this. I'm a huge fan of Elevator Action. It is one of my favorite games to play on the Game Boy. I actually like the Game Boy version better than the NES version. The music was better. It's just fun. It's simple and it's fun. This has the sequel to that, Elevator Action Returns. If you've never seen what that looks like, guys, YouTube that shit and check it out. It's like an updated kind of action-y anime version of Elevator Action and you can play with a friend. So, I mean, that sold. Like, I, I just, <laughs> fuck you, take my money kind of situation. So. You get a bunch of other games on here, I'll rattle off a couple of them just to give you guys an idea. You get Alpine Ski, Darius Gaiden, Curry Kintoon, Arabian, Arabian Magic, Bonds, not Bonks, Bonds Adventure, Liquid Kids, Camel Tree, uh, Lunar Rescue, Chack and Pop, Elevator Action Returns, Super Space Invaders 91, The Legend of Cage, Metal Black, Crazy Balloon, Put what? Actually, you know what? the hell are half of these games? I don't know. <laughs> these must be like Japanese or something. Uh, Rastan 2, I've heard of that one. Oh, yeah. Puzzle Bobble 2. Uh, Space Invaders 95. Whoa, there's a game called Violence Fight. Ooh. Oh. And Space oh. Invaders DX. So, you've got some really obscure stuff on here, guys, but you've also got some really good games, and this isn't that expensive to pick up. If you like Elevator Action, you like Bubble Bobble, and you love that stuff like me, grab it. So next up, we got a trio of Dreamcast games. First up, we have... Ultimate Fighting Championship. Actually, not that bad of a game. It's actually kind of fun. Mm. Uh, the Dreamcast was actually kind of a almost a treasure trove of little games like that. Like the fighting games and stuff, they actually did remarkably well. Even though this was very early on in the uh, the realm of uh, UFC fighting games, so right. this is one of the first one they put out. So, 
So next up we got a game that I got for only a dollar and uh, right up, up until the point where I shot this video I couldn't imagine why because this is at least a three or four dollar game. And then I looked at the spine, which is upside down, I don't know if you guys can see that, Web Browser 2.0. Yeah, definitely look at all sides of the product <laughs> before you buy it. And lastly we got a bit of a rarity in the Sega Dreamcast universe, we have Alien Front Online, one of the very few online games on the Sega Dreamcast. Uh, this is a complete in-box version. It actually had a little microphone uh, that would connect into your Dreamcast controller. So this is before headsets. You could actually get online and talk shit um, when you're taking on aliens, you know, fighting with alien technology or Earth technology, just your standard multiplayer kind of thing. So, I mean, you were... We're talking 56k dial-up, guys. You know, this is before broadband. Mm -hmm. So, um, there is a broadband adapter uh, for the Dreamcast, which is incredibly expensive. It's like $300. But I've heard uh, that there actually are people that are going online through Dreamcast uh, using the broadband adapter and actually playing this stuff. Get so, out! No, I'm serious. So, um, it's really weird that you're actually able to do that um, in the year 2015. But um, maybe I'll have to look into that one day and we'll just do a special episode where we'll jump online and see if it actually works. Yeah, I want to meet all 14 of y'all. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have a pair of original Xbox games. First up, Ninja Gaiden Black. Gaiden, Gaiden, whatever the fuck you say. I say Gaiden. It's fucking awesome. It's Gaiden. Yes. Because it's Gaiden. guiding you to a good game. And once again, we've got another compilation disc here, this time for the original Xbox, uh, Sonic Mega Collection. You got Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Mean Bean Machine, Sonic Spinball, Sonic 3D Blast, and Sonic and & Knuckles. I don't need to say anything else. That's Most it. of those don't suck. No. Next, we got a pair of Wii games. First up, we got Metroid Other M, which is kind of the misfit, I guess you could say, in the Metroid series. It was the first one where Nintendo basically outsourced um, their work on a Metroid game to Hideo Kojima, um, mainly known for doing the Metal Gear Solid series. But to be fair, I mean, he did successfully resurrect Castlevania, oh, yeah. the recent Castlevania game, which was fucking amazing. So um, this one I've never played. I've kind of heard mixed reviews on it. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Um, it's definitely a Kojima game, um, as far as the perspective and whatnot is concerned, but, you know, guys, it's a Metroid game. I, I love the character of Samus Aran, so it's, I'm sure I'm going to be entertained by the story and stuff, so I'm definitely looking forward to checking it out. Next up, Ghost Squad. Awesome arcade shooter. Like we've said a million times, guys, the Wii is just the place where it's at. When you want something, light gun type of stuff, the Wii mode is just the shit. So why don't we move on to Xbox 360? Fine with me, let's do it. First up, we've got the orange box. Uh, this is a rebuy for me, guys. I did originally purchase it. Man, talk about one of the ones that I really regret selling. As far as like value per game is concerned, this is up there, like way up there. I mean, you get Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 Episode 2, Portal Team Fortress 2. I mean, you get one of the best, I mean, it even says right here on the back from IGN.com, the best deal in video game history. You get all that for the price of one game. I mean, that's, that's amazing. You've got AAA titles all the way across the board, no throwout shit, all in the same thing. And it's even called the Orange Box. They didn't even bother giving it another name, just the Orange Box. It's a bargain, bitches! It is. Forza Motorsports 3. The Xbox Gran Turismo. Kick ass. That's all you need. Next up, we have Splinter Cell Blacklist. You can see still sealed in here. Um, I heard a lot of good things from some buddies of mine about this as far as the online co-op and whatnot is concerned. And I love the Splinter Cell franchise, so I'm definitely looking forward to getting online and checking this one out. And I know this is kind of cheating, guys, because this is Retro Game Hall, and this is totally not retro, but I'm just going to throw this one in for shits and giggles. Um, I finally bought Destiny uh, for the Xbox One. Um, big fan of Halo, as anyone who's been in this room can see. Um, Chuck loves Halo. I love Halo. So um, Bungie's first IP outside of the Halo, uh, Halo universe, rather, and I was definitely very eager to play it. I was not disappointed. Um, I played it for just a handful of hours so far, and it's basically Halo meets Borderlands. Um, just a little bit more serious, you know, with the RPG elements and stuff like that. It's so cool just to get online, you know, go to some weird planet or something like that with a buddy and just start raiding tunnels and dungeons and stuff where there's monsters and everything. It's it's really cool. You know, I'm really enjoying it so far and uh, for 30 bucks, got it on a special. Really can't beat that, man. So that about wraps up part one of this month's edition of Retro Game Hall. We were checking out the games. As always, we're going to roll things right along to part two, where we're going to be covering uh, accessories, all types of trinkets and things. So, Chucky, if you would be so kind as to show these good people where the link, where they can go to part two is, right there. 
So, go ahead and click that link, check out part two, man. We got a lot more cool stuff to show you. Thank you everyone so much for stopping by, and as we always say here on Retro Game Hall, to all of our fellow gamers, retro or not, game on. What's up, everybody? Thanks so much for stopping by. Here it is, Retro Game Hall, live from the Retro Game Lounge, doing it gangsta, retro old school, Jimbo Chuck, back on the couch, doing it, man. We're just, we're not sitting here freaking dreaming about collecting games. We're not sitting here, like, just even talking about collecting games. We are collecting games, man. We are bringing the retro to you on YouTube so that you guys can live out vicariously through us. Because that's the whole point of YouTube, it's show and tell. And I was yelling way too loud in this take, and it's totally going to be an outtake at the end of the video, but that's awesome. Thank you. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> good. I really went off the falls on that one, didn't I? Yeah, Sorry. I like it. <laughs> yeah, get, get one. Get one. Okay, I got it! Yeah! Right. I'll get you the ball! <laughs> <laughs> we can't have chaos. No! <laughs> what was that? Jeez. Chaos! <laughs>